Okay. All right. If you're watching this, if you're live, I mean, if you're seeing us on Facebook, we can't see you yet. You know, this is that kind of weird delay where I have to switch back and forth and it's kind of a pain. And I think I'm just checking to make sure I can see us on Facebook. Wait a minute. Okay, coming over here. Too close. Oh, I think I'm getting there. Oh, let's see. <laughs> yes, I think we are live now. Wait a minute. Okay. I gotta get back to Zoom. Oh my lord. I hope you're being entertaining while this is going on. <gasps> hey everybody. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I did it again. I know my first accomplishment. So this is a different kind of interview because I'm not interviewing a novelist. I am interviewing one of my best girlfriends. This is inspirational speaker and incredible all around woman, Nikki Anderson. You can't talk yet. I'm going to talk about you first. Okay. Do you like what she's got over her shoulder? <laughs> she set that up just for this interview. Um, so Nikki, I'm not professionally, um, began, she's got, oh, her life story is so interesting. But anyway, she set herself up as a, she was on her own from an early age and uh, became a world known fitness instructor early on. She was lecturing all over the world and uh, had a very successful studio, but that is not good enough for our Nikki. She takes over as the first female CEO of the second largest chamber of commerce in the state of Illinois. And you're there for what, six years or so, right? Mm -hmm. And see, she's still not talking because she knows I'm not wound down. And she, uh, from there, <laughs> became, uh, is established a university women's leadership program for undergraduates. So first question, Nikki, we have been friends for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and I am asking the questions nobody else thinks to ask because I'm a hard hitting journalist. <laughs> what are you wearing from the a waist down? Um, jeans. <laughs> Okay, I'm just wearing shorts. Yeah. I'd like to know. Oh my gosh, time. these are these questions. I, I, I hope I'm well prepared. Oh, I'm just getting started. How do you remember that we met? I'll tell you what I remember. You, I, I'm not sure we have the same story. How do you remember? Okay. You want me to go? Yeah, you can finally talk okay. now. So you called. So I had always had this admiration for you because I read about you. Um, well deserved. And, and I, I knew of you um, and you had called me and said- He because, called me. Did I Go call ahead. you? Okay, so maybe, maybe we just kept missing each other. I, 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 I can't remember, I'm misremembering. And it, the conversation was, you know, you remind me of like the Dr. Phil of fitness. Now this was before- This is what I told her, yeah. This is years ago when he was just getting started. And um, and I just thought that was, at the time, I was so complimented by that. And it really helped me to tap into um, being more of a teacher than a preacher when it came to health and Very wellness. Very interesting. I remember... Um, because you have lived in our hometown for so long and been so active in so many things, you know, and certainly now, but always you have known way more people than I have known. So your name floated around a lot, but our local little newspaper did a story on who eats what for breakfast. I don't even remember. And everybody is doing, you know, cinnamon rolls and this and that. And you and I had these really healthy little breakfasts. We stood out like as the breakfast nerds, right? And that was when I thought, oh, we have got to talk. Yeah. So we started having breakfasts together. Mm -hmm. And our breakfasts, for me, I always came away from them very energized because there was always something on your mind at a specific period of time. And even if it had nothing to do with writing, after I'd been with you, I'd come out and I'd want to write, 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 write. You gave me a lot of energy as opposed to being an, an energy suck. Mm. So um, we talked about that. That that 
well, okay, get back to the hard hitting questions. I'm going off the notes I made. What are you most excited about right now? If we were having breakfast, what would you be saying? <gasps> Susan, I, blah, 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 blah. I gotta share this I'll with you. you. I have formulated, or not formulated, I have put together the most amazing group of women internationally for my advisory team for, for this leadership program that I'm doing at Benedictine. And it would have never happened had it not been for our current situation because I was on LinkedIn all the time. And I would come across these women that were doing these amazing things in leadership. And I just figured I'd reach out, right? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And even though not all of these women are on my advisory board, I want to interview them. We're gonna be doing interviews. And I've made these connections. And now I have these women that I'm in awe of sitting on this advisory board. And I am, that's what I'm most excited. I'm most excited to have that first meeting. Are these women, um, women who are leaders in business, in, uh, in volunteerism? I mean, what kind of backgrounds do these women have? In, in life, um, like one of the women, she's from London and she has a book on, on women and leadership and she loves mentoring um, and it's business business focus. So mm -hmm. I would say the majority, if not all of them are, are business focused and just smart, kind, um, energy givers, right? Just right. amazing women that I have not only had the good fortune to get to know, but that they have said yes to something they know nothing about because I'm still in the process of creating it. Um, and that energy from them kind of to your point earlier has just filled me up with so much excitement about what we can create for these young women. And that, boom. Yeah. This is, I know this is the first thing you would be saying even before we got our cups of tea, you'd be telling yeah. me about this. What, are you finding any common um, bonds between these women? Mm -hmm. um, like, give us, I mean, give us a hint. They love helping other women. They love helping women rise. And the idea of being able to have the opportunity to connect with, with um, these, these undergraduate women. And all of them have said in one way or another that this isn't just about me mentoring or helping them. I learn from them. I learn what are on the minds of these young women today, what they're thinking, what their fears are, what, like, those are things, it was different when I was 20 or 18. Oh my gosh, <laughs> very different. So the idea, so they all have this commitment to helping women colleagues rise, but also the idea of being able to have a connection with these young women and helping them find their voice and use it, that's, that's been the common denominator. As you've taught, now of course you've been limited in terms of how much contact you can have with these undergraduates. I assume a lot of it is, is, is Zoom, this kind of thing. Are, is this, generation going in the university now, are they looking for this or do they even know that they need it? That's a great question. So in my humble opinion, so our first cohort won't start until next fall. Right. But I have this student advisory team of these lovely women and they, yes, they said it's something that they, if it's offered, they will jump on it. Prior to this, and you know about this, I took my daughter, she's 28, um, and a bunch of her friends out for dinner pre-COVID. And I had a litany of questions to ask them, right? Everything about leadership, job experience, confidence, all of these things. They, they are hungry for it, um, really. And they don't know what they need but they know that leadership is something that when they have a woman that they've had the opportunity to work with that is a great leader, they know how important that is, not only for success, but create a great culture, a great environment. And let me be clear, there are some men out there that are just as passionate about helping women rise too. Right. So um, those are interviews that I look forward to doing, men that have been champions of women and been sponsors of women. That's been the case in my life. I've typically had more men as my yeah, sponsors yeah. and mentors than, than women. Yeah. Well, this is a bit of a sidebar, um, getting a little more personal. Uh, you're a little bit mighty. Um, and 
when you took over in a position that had always been held by men, um, without you know getting too personal, although I'd love to, <laughs> what were some of the challenges you faced? Give us some idea of some of the challenges you faced and how you worked worked through them. Um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see. I'm not really a skilled interviewer yet, <laughs> but here's what I want to talk about before we get to that point. Okay. I am a natural people pleaser, as I think a lot of women mm. are. Mm. You are not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Talk about the people pleaser versus the whatever we call this other woman in terms of business and life. How's that for a big topic? I was just thinking about that with connection with you. That's a that's a lot. That's we could talk a lot about that. So you know I'm a I'm fanatical about quotes. I love writing quotes because that's how my mind thinks. My husband calls me the soundbite queen. You are. So that's kind of how my mind works. And one of the quotes that I put out a while ago, because someone said, like, how can you just not care? Right. And I said, ah, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. just you because care. I don't care what people think doesn't mean I don't care about people. I care very much for people, but I, I've just been very lucky that I don't allow the noise to get into my head and, and be my critic. I'm, I'm my own worst critic sometimes, right? You I don't are, need huh? extra voices, you know, yeah, you are. taking mm -hmm. residence up there. So um, I, I think I've been really lucky. I don't know if it's just a natural thing. You know, I would say maybe in my thirties, I might've cared a little bit, but you know, I started a business from nothing. I had no experience, nothing. And I'm like, let's see what happens. And people thought I was nuts and that I'd never make it. Right. And you know how I am about that. Oh, you don't think I can do this. Okay. Okay. This will be fun. Um, so I, I think that, um, I worry about not worry, but, um, I'm, I'm, when I have conversations with women that I know they're making a decision based on what's externally gratifying versus what's internally gratifying, I, I like to talk to them about that because it's like, kind of like what we tell our kids, you know, these friends that you have in elementary school, you might not have them forever, you know, when there's that peer pressure going on or they're being mean or whatever, like these are not gonna be your lifetime friends. You will find those lifetime friends. And it's sort of like with that, like, I don't, I don't want that noise to come into my world. And so if you're making that decision externally, will that still matter to you five years from now? I, the thing that I find so interesting is you are not a people pleaser, but you're one of the most caring people I know. Oh, thank and you. I think that that's very interesting. You're also, uh, you know, we have certain personality types that we call connectors. You are the queen of connecting. You have to meet so-and-so. I'm going to get together, get you together with this group. Someone comes, you have people coming to you with issues and problems all the time, mm -hmm. and you're connecting them. Mm -hmm. um, does, that has to make you feel good. Is it, do you pat yourself on the back for that? Or is it just natural or? Um, I, I don't do that. I, I mean, I, I never do anything because I'm going to get something out of it. I right. Mm -hmm. um, I do it because if I have an opportunity to help somebody, to connect them with someone who it could potentially be a great friend or just uh, get them to where I know they're capable of going, mm -hmm. that's the joy. I do get joy from it. Um, but, you know, being kind, that I, I have to. Like, that's, I have to. I, I can't imagine and don't get me wrong I can be a snip but I I it's one of the most important things to me is to be kind to everybody to I've be heard kind. you say that so many times so yeah. let's go back to stepping into a job that has traditionally been had been traditionally held by men what kind of challenges did you face with that I, you had some really great men around you I know some great women too yeah, um, I think, you know, I didn't overthink it, to be honest. I really didn't think, I thought my challenges would be the same as anybody else's. Look, I came into a business that had been not really well managed for quite some time. And my focus was my customers, those chamber members, that was all that mattered to me. So my role was 
creating an organization that would ultimately help those small, medium, and large business owners or, you know, um, uh, in the large businesses, it was really more their employees that, that right, right. things. you know, how can we empower them? How can we help them get the tools they need to succeed? That for me, it was like building a business. So I loved it. The biggest challenge was I had to do politics. I don't do politics. Although people say you life is politics. You I, that was my biggest fear. I used to literally get nauseous before meetings because I didn't know. Um, I remember then, us talking about that because you regarded that as a huge weakness on your part. I think because it just, you're very straightforward. You do not yes. want to have to deal with undercurrents and all this kind of thing. No. Nope. Um, nope. But by the end of your tenor, tenure there, you were pretty skilled in dealing with all the political sort of issues. I, you know what? I think, you know, as my husband says, he's my biggest supporter, you know that. He is. Is he's that life guy. is politics. Life is politics. If you think about it, right? Whether something's going on with a neighbor, something's going on with your kids and their friends. I mean, life, it's, it's, it's politics, right? It's how we respond. Mm -hmm. And so I think that what I learned is, gosh, I know as much as anybody else. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> um, right? So I, I, it really reduced my, and, and people said I was good at it. So you were. There we are. You are. So I don't, I think about um, you and I right now are blessed to have jobs mm -hmm. yes. and security. Yes. And so many people don't now. Do you mm -hmm. have any thoughts about women who are um, dealing with unemployment, who are trying to balance uh, educating their kids at home, trying to find new jobs in this economy with what's going on. I know this is something you have to have thought about, and I'm sure you don't have a magic bullet, but where are your thoughts on all this now? So for women that are either, um, you know, trying to be a teacher and a parent and work, right, if they have a job, mm -hmm. or if they're being a parent and a teacher and they don't have a job, I think two things come to mind. One, create a circle of support. Like find that you need, because on those days when you are at your lowest of low, you need someone saying, you got this, you got this, right? So a circle of support is so important. I know for those that are not in a, don't have their jobs right now, um, like in where I live, we have a wonderful uh, networking and community career center um, that is a wonderful um, resource for, for women, right? Um, but I think about when you're parenting and teaching and trying to find a job, just trying to find a job sometimes is a 24 hour job, right? right? right. And then on top of that, you're parenting and teaching. So um, I, I even thought the other day, you know, if you can find five minutes to just breathe and that might mean going into the bathroom mm -hmm. and shutting the door. It does, yeah. Right? and just try and quiet your mind and stop. And that sounds so silly, but we're always going, we're always going. And that sometimes we just need that pause, even if it's three minutes running in the bathroom and just taking that breath, right? Mm -hmm. And just going, yeah, this, this, this is hard. It's mm -hmm. hard. Um, you know, I wish we could do more, but I think the circles of support, finding things on Facebook, right? There are some powerful groups. I have this group of women right now that I follow. It is so beautiful because everything is support, 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 support. There is no ugliness on there. It is just about celebrating us as best as we can, even when we're feeling like there's nothing to celebrate. So um, yeah, it's hard. And and I just try and and pray for those people. Um, when I say those people, you know what I mean? I pray for those that are struggling. Yes. Um, there are so many different levels of struggle. Yeah. It, it, it is certainly, certainly challenging. Um, you did, uh, I want to mention that you have a website, NikkiAnderson.com and it's N-I-C-K-I, -I, the cute spelling. <laughs> 
which you know for a power woman it should be nicole or something like that it's monica I, but i don't do that i know you don't i was so shocked when i found out that was your own name so it's nikkianderson.com and you have been blogging on that site forever and there are so many it, it's like having breakfast with you because whatever is on your mind at one point or another you've blogged about and you talked about um the pandemic uh, slowing uh, in your last in your last blog, I think the le the personal lessons for you uh, with the pandemic in terms of slowing down and experiencing things. And I read this whole thing, and I kind of wanted to go because it's so hard. Talk to us about it. <laughs> Remind me of my sister. Stop sending me those quotes. <laughs> um, you know, You're so right. It's so hard for you i know and me yeah you know i am a thinker um another thing that bill always says to me is it must hurt to live in your head <laughs> because i'm always thinking yeah, you are and you know the older i get i think the deeper i get um which i sort of love that right because i'm not the older i i get i think i find that i worry less about this out here and really worry how I can be a better person to serve others better, right? So, you know, we're all going through this in our own way. And for me, I am a doer. I was always out. I was always busy, right? Always busy. And um, I had a friend that said to me when I own my business, you know, you need to be careful. You need to slow down because 30 years from now, you're going to go look back and go, what happened, right? And was I even, was I there? <laughs> So um, I, I have intentionally, like I have rituals that I do that have really forced me to slow down and it inspired that. And, and I never write them again to be like, I got this. It's, You're thinking out loud. Yes, I'm learning this. I'm learning this. And I trip, stumble and fall with everybody else. Um, and so I hope that that's conveyed and that it's not, look at me, I got this all figured out because yeah, I yeah. don't. No, I think you, when you talk like, when you do your blogs, you, um, you always talk about that, that, you know, you, that this is, this is you in a learning position. And by the way, if anybody thinks that you have a life of leisure, in addition to being a businesswoman and a wife, you have four children and two grandchildren. I do. Um, you have a very, very busy life, plus a huge friends friendship circle which i'm sure nurtures you but also uh, it, having such a large circle of acquaintances and friends can be a bit of a burden because you can't be if you were in touch with everybody all the time you wouldn't get anything yeah. done right yeah yeah i i think that's hard you know i think um there comes a point when you 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 choose um like i have there are wonderful people in in my life that i that i've come to know and are amazing but i have a small circle of of very close people um, because yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that would that would be you. Wait, this is kind of backwards on this thing. I'm trying to figure it out anyway. Um, yeah, and, and mainly because it is time and I wanna be able to give that time. And if I had 40 friends that were close friends, I, I, I don't think I could be a quality friend. Um, I yeah. think I'd be trying to, to be busy. What do you look for in a friend? Mm. Kindness. Genuine kindness. Smarts. I love, oh. My love friends them. are smart. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I just like to sit and just listen to them. And uh, we're not talking PhD smart. We're talking about street smarts. Because uh, I know some of your friends. All, uh, kinds, aware. all kinds of smarts. Yeah. Aware. Yeah. And kind and smart and funny because i do love a good sense of humor you do um yeah i i would say yeah i think i had that was sort of my aha moment when i thought about the people that i'm closest to the women i'm closest to and the thing that every single woman i'm close to one of the first characteristics i'd say they have is caring mm -hmm. and i think that's um that's really that's that's just so important to me and in, in friends people who care about other people yeah. um 
you read a lot of business books and a lot of nonfiction. Is there anything you're reading now that is really, or have read recently that you're really excited about? I could go on a rant, but I'm going to share one because I think it's really poignant given where we are now. It's called The Three-Day Effect. And it talks about the power of being outside and how they have used this three-day effect. Um, they started doing research with PST, uh, post-traumatic PTSD, mm -hmm. um, and found that when they are out outside in the wilderness camping, whatever it is, but outside, um, by that third day, there is this dramatic change in them. They say it's equivalent to a year of therapy. Really? And so after some of the veterans that they worked with, they started working with abused women, um, young women that were uh, came from traumatic childhoods, but it's, it's written by a journalist. And she, her biggest challenge is that she's going to take a fellow journalist of hers out camping. And this guy is a dyed in the wool city dweller, like the kind of like me, like camping, not so much. I don't camp. Um, but I, the idea of being outside, like, think about it when we're able, when we have the luxury of being able to go out for a walk, yeah. like how we feel when we come back, right? Three days of that. And they say it is so cathartic for people. And so that might be a book. It's an easy read, but I love, I love the, the author because you can hear her voice, but this guy, this colleague of hers that she finally got out and the first two days, all he did was complain. He had just been through a divorce. He was out of shape and didn't care. And, you know, just everything was wrong in his life, but he was angry about it. By that third day, it was like, and, and when she interviewed him after, and they take all your vitals before right, and right. after. Mm -hmm. And it's just really interesting that something that we don't have to pay for that's out there all the time um, can have such a profound effect on our psyche and our overall well-being. So that might be one. I think it's it, it has been tough on people who are used to being out a lot, um, traveling to places and hiking and all that. It, it, you know, that now you're hiking in your in your neighborhood if you're lucky, if you have a safe neighborhood. Um, right. But this is why I, I, you know, you know me, I work outside on my porch all summer long because I, I just feel like yeah. it's a more stimulating yeah. kind of atmosphere. Um, I so I want, just want to touch briefly on the idea of fitness because that's what drew us together. And mm -hmm. I have to say, I, I think that there's nothing that's much more obnoxious than two <laughs> thin women talking about fitness. But one of us was mm -hmm. obese. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would be me. That'd be me. Um, <laughs> and that's that started, kind of what inspired me. Yeah. That started your journey. Yeah. And what I love, I mean, cutting to the chase with both of us is how we, how much we believe in the fact that you don't have to go out and run a marathon to be fit. That for some people with, with physical issues, just walking to the mailbox, mm -hmm. getting off the couch, is huge. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. You're, I, I mean, I know this is a big topic for you because yeah, you I could go on forever. Um, I think one of the saddest things in, in my experience in that realm when I was there is just this push of, of restriction. And I don't know, man, I, I could go on and on. So I will just say that fitness is really mental physical and spiritual, right? There are people that can't walk, that can't go out, right? Right. You can, you can stretch, right? We have this idea that, you know, what we see in magazines and, and, you know, ripped abs and all that garbage. I mean, God bless the people. If that's their thing, you know, whatever. I just want to feel good and do what I can to um, take care of this, this mm -hmm. body that I have, mm -hmm. right? Um, but nothing obsessive, you know, um, nutrition, eat well most of the time, right? And you know what that is, your grandparents knew what it was, right? Eat your vegetables. Um, you know, try less screen time, except when you're interviewing people. <laughs> um, and if you're doing screen time, make it positive, 
right? Yeah. There's so much ugliness out there. Let's find the, the, the sunshine, right? We need more of that. Um, so it's, it's how we treat ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, um, how we care for others. When we do something for someone else, that, that affects our health. That's a good thing. You know, having conversations, even though it's Zoom right now, or even if you social distance from neighbors, fitness is so much more than getting on a treadmill and running or walking or lifting right. weights, right? It's it's a culmination of doing good things for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love the fact that you talk about it in three terms, in terms of physical and mental and spiritual, because I really, I, I do think that's true. I remember uh, years and years ago, I'm complaining to you because even though, I mean, I'm walking all the time, I'm walking every day, I'm a big walker and I'm going, oh, but Nikki, I, feel, I just don't feel flexible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And um, that was when I started my yoga program just to stretch and feel good again. And you yeah. were such a cheerleader for me, making that transition, adding that. Yeah, I mean, look, I our bodies change, right? It's just nature, they change. And so anything that we can do to accommodate a more graceful change, um, I, I think is, is good for us, right? I, yeah. um, I got aches and pains. I mean, I wake up, when I get up in the middle of the night, you know, after having to find my way to the bathroom and it's like, <laughs> I, <laughs> you're right. Um, and even in the morning, oh, but you know, that's, that's life. So I do what I can to, to make it um, a little less um, uncomfortable. So we've, I, and I know I'm skipping around all over the place, but I just want everybody to get a taste of all the, <laughs> you just have so much to share. Um, so you have, um, you've been talking and blogging about aging even though i'm older than you are and what are some uh -huh. insights you've had about aging and talk to us about your hair ah <laughs> oh yeah because we were having this conversation right so yeah. um after 25 years of coloring i decided that i want to go gray um here was my deciding factor because i am in no way going everybody should go gray because it's bad. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that my deciding factor was twofold. One, it was windy. I was due for a hair color. And I found myself doing this, God forbid that if my hair blows and someone sees I'm gray, like I was ashamed of it. Uh, I was ashamed of it. I like, so am I ashamed that I'm covering the gray or am I ashamed that I am gray? So I kind of just did some digging. Um, I tried to go gray, as you know, about eight years ago, and I think it lasted a month. <laughs> um, but I found this Facebook group, and I'm not a lot on social media, as you know. You don't um, have time. <laughs> yeah, and these women were so inspirational, and you got to be ready. Like you have to be ready. Um, you know, they may say it makes you look old. I am at a point where what is old who defines that right we have defined that as a society what old is um we are young like when you say i'm older or you're older than me or i'm older than you no 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 we are we are both so full of energy and passion that's youth like i'm not old um and if i have gray hair and you think i'm old okay this way this will be fun um, <laughs> So I was just ready and I'm really, and my hairdresser who kind of went, oh, I don't know. I, I went in and she said, and we wear masks, great protocol. We can and do this said, in Illinois, by the way, we can go yeah, to we can. in Illinois. And she said, I think I'm gonna love it. Do you? And I said, I love it. So that's, that's kind of why, but it's gotta be a thing. It's, and it's not like, again, I have, I mean, my hairdresser colors her hair, right? So it's not, oh, you shouldn't color your hair. Uh-uh, it's, I want to change. I want to do something different. You know, I like change. You do. Um, so um, your strength I've always felt is um, starting, is, is finding a problem and solving it. You love to do that. Uh, it, it, and I've seen you do it in a lot of different ways. The gray hair thing is interesting. I'm not on that journey with you. <laughs> Um, that's, and that's okay. That's I don't okay. expect anybody to be moved or not by what I do. 
This is right, but my here's day. the thing with you, because you are uh, smaller in stature, this does give you a kind of gravitas. And I think that, I, you know, you're powerful enough when you were, when your hair was all dark. Right. Once you add that gray, your power is going to be actually scary. Well, <laughs> so, oh my gosh, my gray hair is going to be my new superpower. It is going to be, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, so I want to go back to for our, our oh, by the way, if, um, we cannot see any of your questions that you're posting. If you're posting questions oh. or comments, uh, because I have to do this from Zoom instead of Facebook, I can't see them. But if you have specific questions, post them and I'll make Nikki go over there or I'll go over there and and we'll respond to them. So we will see them afterward. Um, so. I want to go back to the, the, I'm just so fascinated by these younger women in the leadership program. What specific kinds of skills do you think, I know, I know this is a broad topic, but what specific kind of skills are you going to work with, with them? And I don't know if it has anything to do with this people pleasing thing or not, but this is a real vague question I'm throwing at you. Well, you know, it's interesting because I'm in the world of academia now, which is foreign to me. I have been in the business world. I was an entrepreneur. I do what I want. And here's the thing. I do it like that, right? Like, I don't like to waste time. So Thor and I have that in common. Um, and so I think that um, I, I needed to come up with competencies because I need to have something that is quantifiable, right? And so we have competencies that we have that's come from our curriculum. So things like self-advocacy, um, uh, listening, right? Um, there's there's 12 of them and right. I, I can't think of them. And Wait a minute, I gotta them. interrupt right now. What? Self-advocacy, mm. what does that mean and how does that play out? How to be a champion for yourself. And here's, here's um, I use this example often. When there's a job posting, typically when men go to apply, if they have 30 to 40% of the qualifi qualifications, they apply for it. Women, if they don't have a minimum of 90%, they won't apply, right? Really? So, that so, is shocking. I know. So an example then would be me with the chamber. If I had to check all the boxes, I would have said, the, the algorithms would have pushed me out. But I knew I was perfect for that because I check the boxes that really make a difference for the organization. I work well with people. I'm a connector. I was a business owner, all of those things. So being an advocate is don't look at what the expectations are out here. What are the expectations you have for yourself? Yes. And well, are you being true to yourself? Yeah. 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 So, um, and that's something that's hard for a lot of women. Like I put up on Facebook every once in a while that it's uh, brag time, okay? Tell uh, us something great about yourself, not your kids yeah. and not your family, but you personally. And I am fascinated how many times people, some the women will, some of the women will step up, but some of the women will, they're, Pride is still tangled in other people. Uh, and I just love that being able to say, these are the things I'm good at. Yeah, and, and, and owning them. When I was leaving the chamber, they did this beautiful goodbye celebration. And yeah, you cried, by the way, you cried like a baby. Just mentioning it. Um, but I got up there and one of the things we say is, oh, you know, I had a great team. I did it. And women don't own that. Uh -huh. And I said, I have a great team. I have this, but I own the success <laughs> that I developed. And I think that's really hard for women because we are so, we are such team players. We are such collaborators, right? And, and I think it's hard sometimes for women. It seems like selfish to be talking about yourself. And I did actually a workshop on that, on how to accept a compliment. Perfect example, Susan. I love that shirt. And typically they go, Oh, I got it on sale. Thing, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Right. It doesn't matter. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You look beautiful today. Oh, really? I didn't oh, tell my hair. I today. Yeah. 
thank you. Owning that, that yes, I, whatever it is to own it and know it to the core, not just hear it and let it go, own it, own it. Yeah. That is absolutely a perfect place for us to stop. That is so beautiful. We could have talked forever. And right. for all of you who are with me right now, um, this is it. the only difference between what we're doing now and our breakfast conversation is we're in a different setting and we're not stuffing our faces because this is exactly the way the conversation goes is uh, you can see why I'm in love with this woman. So make sure you check out if you want to see more of Nikki's thoughts and her blogs. It's Nikki Anderson and I C K I Anderson dot com. My friend, I love you. You are one of love the world's you. good people. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.